This fast and friendly beginner's guide will teach you all of the essentials on how to use Ubuntu, the world's most widely used free and open source desktop operating system. Part 1 of this video series will show you how to download and install Ubuntu, so let's get started. Alright, so let's dive right into it here. First we're going to open up a web browser in order to download and install Ubuntu. And we're going to go straight to their website, ubuntu.com. Now from the home page, we're going to download the ISO image file that we're going to use to put onto a USB flash drive that we can use to then install Ubuntu straight to your PC's hard drive. So we're going to go to download, and we're going to download the Ubuntu desktop. Now, there are two versions that you can typically download. The first one is the long-term support release. Now, I'm going to go into these very briefly and let you decide which one is best for you. The long-term support release here is supported for up to 10 years, potentially. So you get a bunch of security updates and bug fixes to uh, critical issues with the operating system for quite some time. As opposed to the latest desktop version here, which in this case is version 19.10, which is supported for a total of nine months. So there's two ways that users typically go about this. They can install the long-term support release, and most of them don't update their entire operating system for about two years until the next long-term support release gets released. While the other group upgrades their operating system every six months using the latest release version of Ubuntu. Now there are benefits and constraints to both of these methods. One of the biggest constraints to the LTS release is that you don't get any upgrades to the desktop. So if you're running the GNOME desktop, or whichever desktop you run, whatever version is installed on the LTS release is what you're going to have for the next two years. Versus the latest release, which is released every six months. So this is more current as far as staying up to date with the latest software as to where this one you have a more uh, rock solid experience in terms of stability but you're not going to get any big upgrades so if you see uh, upgrades to one of the uh, open source programs that you like then you're going to be stuck with whatever version comes out on this release here so the choice is yours this is purely a preference thing uh, it's up to you I'm going to choose the latest release here but this method will work for both ways so I'm going to select 19.10 and it's going to begin the download. I'm going to hit save and it's going to save into my downloads folder. Now the download process has started and this is a pretty big file. This is 2.3 gigabytes. Uh, so depending on your internet connection speed, this could take a while. This will probably be the longest part of the download and installation process. So I'm going to pause the video and resume once the download is complete. Okay, so the download is complete. I do have the latest release of Ubuntu. The ISO image is now saved locally onto my computer in the downloads folder. So now we're going to download the program to get this ISO image onto the USB flash drive. The program's name is going to be called Rufus. So we're going to go to the following website, rufus.ie. And we're going to scroll down to Rufus 3.8 or whatever the latest release version is that is going to uh, be right here. And it's going to download and go into the downloads folder. I'm going to click on save. This is a very quick download. Okay, so once it's downloaded, the next thing you're going to want to do is take a 4 gigabyte flash drive. So find any 4 gigabyte USB flash drive. Make sure it's clean, that there is nothing on it, that there's no personal data, as everything that's on this flash drive is going to be deleted. So make sure you back up the contents on your flash drive. Okay, once it's been inserted, then you can run Rufus. And the Windows user account control will ask if you want to allow this app to make changes to your device. You can click yes. Okay, so here we are. 
it's going to show the device that the ISO image is going to be installed onto, that the Ubuntu image is being installed to. And in this case, it has selected my uh, USB flash drive. In the event that you have multiple USB flash drives plugged in, you can either remove them so that you only have one uh, plugged in, which is the one you want to install it on, or you can simply select it from this drop-down box here. So now you're going to want to go down to this area here, and it's asking for the disk or the ISO image, which it's already set to the uh, option that you want, but now we need to select the image. So we click on this button here, select, and it's going to open up a window, and we can select the Ubuntu 19.10 image, or the uh, 18.04, or the latest LTS release, whichever one you have downloaded. And from there, all of the other settings are filled in automatically, and you're good to go. So you can press start at the bottom here. It's going to give you a couple of warnings. So it's going to download some additional files to make the USB flash drive bootable so that you can boot uh, Ubuntu from it in order to install it. You're going to click yes. It's then going to ask uh, which format that you would want to install it on. Just use the recommended option and click OK. And a final warning that all data on this flash drive will be destroyed. Click OK. And you can see it's going to run through a quick process here where it's going to copy this ISO image onto this flash drive and it's copying all of the files and de details therein. Once that's done, it's going to finish up by making the USB flash drive bootable and then we will be done with the first step and we are over halfway done installing Ubuntu. Depending on the speed of your USB flash drive, whether it's USB 2.0 or 3.0, and the speed of your USB ports, this could take anywhere from uh, 1 to 3 minutes, possibly 5 minutes at most. You'll see it's going to slow down a little bit once it gets to this section here. It is copying the largest file in this ISO image, which is 1.8 gigabytes but then it will pass. So if it hangs on that big file, don't worry, it is copying, it might just take a moment or two. Okay, and it's all finished and ready to go. Finished up in one minute and 40 seconds. So I'm going to close this and I can close all of my other windows and you'll be good to go. So your flash drive is now ready. It's primed with Ubuntu on it and you'll be able to boot from it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to restart your PC and boot from the USB flash drive in order to install Ubuntu. Now, most desktop and laptop PCs today have a boot manager to let you choose which device you want to boot from, whether that be your computer's internal hard drive, a CD or DVD disk, or a USB flash drive. To access the boot manager, you'll have to press the right keyboard key before you see Windows loading, that is, before you see the Windows logo appear on your screen. The most common keyboard shortcuts to enter the boot manager, in order of popularity, are Escape, F8, F9, F10, F11, and F12. Try these one at a time, pressing one key on the keyboard repeatedly right after you power on your PC. If you see the Windows logo appear, you didn't press the key in time, or it wasn't the right key. No problem. Just wait for Windows to get to the login screen, and then restart your PC. And try again with a different keyboard key this time. Once you press the right key, you'll see a screen that looks like this. The appearance and layout might differ from PC to PC, but every boot manager will show a list of drives that your PC can boot from. If the USB flash drive containing Ubuntu is the only flash drive or external hard drive plugged into your PC, it should be fairly easy to spot. Look for any option that says USB in the title. This will likely be your USB flash drive. Use the up and down arrow keys to move the highlighted cursor over the USB boot option, and then press the Enter key. Your PC will now load Ubuntu and run it straight from your USB flash drive. 
This is a live working version of the same operating system that will be installed on your computer. Okay, and once the live USB is done loading, you will be greeted with this installation window. On the left column here, you can select your preferred language. This will make the rest of the installation process easier, depending on where you are in this great wide world. <laughs> And then there are two options over here. The first one is Try Ubuntu, which will boot you into that live session that I mentioned earlier. And the second option, which we're going to choose, is to install Ubuntu, which is going to install it directly to your hard drive. So let's click that. And then you can choose your preferred keyboard layout. And then click Continue. A few customization options here. You can choose uh, which apps you would like to install to start with. So after you finish installing and booting up, you can have a normal installation. This installation includes a couple of other applications such as uh, office software, games, and media players. If you prefer a minimal installation, which just includes a web browser and basic utilities, you can use that as well. Uh, for most of us, we'll probably want to choose the normal installation, so just highlight that. Well, let's uncheck download updates while installing. And then, this is going to be optional, this is up to your preference. What this option does is it installs third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. So, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, or you have a proprietary Wi-Fi card, or you want to listen to your MP3 music files or watch all of your videos, you're going to need these media formats, these codecs. So, if you want those things, you can check this box. If you're a free software enthusiast and you want to run like the plague and stay away from anything proprietary, then certainly uncheck that. <laughs> but for most of us who are okay with the convenience of having a little bit of proprietary software on our machine, feel free to check that. Again, that's up to your preference. And once you do that, click continue. Okay, now this is the point of uh, no return here, so I need to stress something very clearly. Make sure before you do this that you have all of your important files backed up because this is going to erase everything on your hard drive. Right now I'm installing this inside of a virtual machine, but for those of you who are installing this straight to your laptop, you're probably going to see an option here that says install alongside Windows, something like that at the top here. And that is an option for if you would like to do what's called dual booting, which means that you can install Ubuntu alongside the free space in Windows, and it will automatically partition your hard drive and kind of split it down the middle so that it can be used for both operating systems. I did make a separate video for that, which I'll include up here in the uh, top right, and you can uh, you can look at that if you want, but I'm assuming for the sake of simplicity that you are starting either with a new laptop and you want to install Ubuntu onto it or you're looking to replace Windows entirely and just make the complete jump over to free software. So whichever option allows you to erase the disk and install Ubuntu, go ahead and select that. This is going to set up everything automatically and make it nice and easy to install and then we can click install now. And it's making one final confirmation saying write the changes to disk. Uh, if you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disks. Otherwise, you will be able to make further changes manually. So this is kind of, again, the point of no return. It's saying, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? And make sure you have your data backed up. I'm just saying that as a disclaimer. Uh, if you need to go back and then quit and boot back up into Windows, you can certainly do that. Just make sure that you have your important stuff backed up and then click continue. This is the final step and we'll begin the installation process. And now it is installing on your machine right now and it's going to ask for a couple of uh, configuration settings to be set up while it's installing. So during the install it's going to ask where are you? I'm in the uh, Pacific uh, Northwest over here so I'm going to leave that time zone as is but you can choose different time zones depending on where you are in the world and then click continue once you have your time zone selected and you have a couple of personalization options over here you can uh, input your name 
You can also put in your computer's name. This is going to be useful for if you're accessing this over a network or if you're looking to detect your PC on a network. Uh, it always helps to have a name. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to name this PC Freedom PC. Because why not? We all love freedom, don't we? Uh, and you can pick a username. By default, it will uh, auto-generate one for you based on whatever name you put into here. If you want to change it, you can. This is simply your personal identifier to the computer. And then a password. So if you are the password-loving kind like I am, you can type in a uh, password. And when you log in after you boot to Ubuntu, you're, you can put in this password uh, to log into your machine. And once you have all of your uh, personalization options set up, then you can click continue. And that's it. The rest of this is automated and you get to be greeted to a friendly little slideshow over here depicting a lot of the newest features and benefits to Ubuntu. If you want to click the right arrow here, you can uh, see some of the cool things that you can look forward to after the installation is complete. Lots of fun. It's a whole new world of free software that awaits you. <laughs> and then at the bottom, you will see the, uh, the status of the install. So you can see the progress bar going over here and the specific actions that are, that are being taken place that you can start to see. It's going to run through a lot of technical installation jargon. Uh, there is a skip button here for certain things during the installation, I would advise not clicking this. Just let it run through its process. Let, uh, let nature run its course here. If you were curious and wanted to see more technical details, you could click this little arrow here and you'll see exactly which commands are being run. Only if you were curious. If not, you can click the arrow or click the text and it will return back to normal. So thankfully, the installation process is fairly rapid. It won't take longer than a few minutes for this to complete. And then the last uh, slide here will give you uh, some helpful links, things you can take notes of uh, for official documentation as well as community resources. So you can get plugged into the community. You can uh, start to, like at, using uh, Ask Ubuntu is a great website and a great resource if you have any questions that you want to ask. Uh, as well as some a huge collection of online documentation. If there's ever anything uh, in depth or technical that you want to read or figure out something about Ubuntu or how to do it, they have documents for everything. It's super helpful. As well as this website in particular is very useful. I have asked a bunch of questions over the course of my time using Ubuntu, and it has uh, the community has just been awesome and very helpful in these selective areas. So be sure to create an account on Ask Ubuntu and uh, feel free to ask any questions there if you need to. Looks like the installation process is just about finished. And the installation is complete. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> you need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. So at that point, what you'll do is it's all done and you're good to go. You can press the restart now button and it will automatically do the restarting process. You can remove the installation medium, in this case your USB flash drive, so unplug that from your PC, and then press enter, and you will be good to go. So before jumping on to the next part of this video series, I would appreciate it if you clicked the, the like button so that uh, more people can see these videos and can benefit from them. And once you do, go ahead and move on to the next video, and we will see you there where I discuss the Ubuntu desktop and getting to know the desktop, its behavior, and getting familiar with your brand new operating system. We'll see you there.